Welcome back to Alison Hazel Art. In this video we're going to be looking at a sketch journal page that I have created. I'm using, it's around an A5 piece of sketch paper. What I do is I have the paper separately then I will glue it into my sketch journal later. I'm just taping it down with some um, washi tape so it's going to stay in position and I just want to show you that we I have already done the pencil sketch there. What we have here is, this is what I'm calling florist shelf, where we have uh, two shelves on the actual page and the main shelf has got some plant work on, like a florist would have, and then the top shelf just has some empty vases which have the potential to put flowers in if that's what you wanted. So I just drew my sketch simply with a pencil and I'm now going to go over with a pen to pen over the, the pencil work um, to actually bring it into more prominence. So once I've drawn over with the pen I will go ahead and erase the pencil work. Now I've done these shelf style artworks previously. I do enjoy them. I think it's a simple way to get going with artwork and it's really something that anybody can do. The pen I'm using here is a 0.3 millimeter. It's a Faber-Castell artist pit pen but you could use any black pen at all and as I said I'm just using basic um, sketch paper from my big sketchbook. The idea here is that to get going with art as, as a much of a beginner artist as, as you may be is to keep it simple that and I find that when you just start with shelves you've got something to ground the almost doodles of the artwork that you're going to put on. So we've got different shapes here of vases that you would typically perhaps find in a florist's florist where they're doing preparing bouquets of flowers for other people. This is um, an imaginary place that I have and it's how I would think that a florist would run their business. They'd have a whole lot of vases to hand and bits and bobs that relate to the actual florist's work as well. I'm going to speed things up a little bit here and quickly go over all the ink, of, go over with my pen over all the pencil work. I like to do a sketch journal page about twice a, twice a month, so that's every two weeks I will prepare something to record what's going on in my life. So I, I do have the two little picture frames um, on this drawing, the one is the square picture frame just there on the, on the left, and then I have the circle picture frame on the right, and in both of those I'm going to put the date of the drawing which will be today's date and I will generally put the temperature because I like to kind of track what the temperature was on particular days. Also the area on the back wall below the, the bottom shelf is where I'm going to be writing some gratitude comments that I have, how I'm feeling and what I'm grateful for in my life. So it's a way to reflect back upon what things were like and what we were doing on a particular day. So on that middle shelf we have a vase there with some plants, material, and laying on the shelf are also some twigs and branches that I, one would assume would be part of the actual main bouquet. So in any way you, you can put those there. I also have a pair of shears and then hanging on the back wall is some ribbon that I would assume would be what we call florist ribbons where they just tie them around the bouquet. So this is just um, something interesting to put on, on my shelf. The idea being that I'm going to come back in now and start with the flowers. It's a, I would want to call this maybe a summer bouquet, pretty straightforward daisies. I have a couple of roses and then some uh, green foliage at the back because that's how um, bouquets really look. What I'd like to talk about in this particular video is about getting started and getting over the paralysis of doing artwork as someone who perhaps doesn't necessarily consider themselves an artist but enjoys drawing, doodling and so on. I put art on the back burner for many years, many many years and it's only recently that I've started to actively pay attention to expressing myself through art because I find that it helps me, I find it in a way it's in a way it's self-care where you're almost meditating and concentrating on creating something beautiful. You are excluding all the, all, the, all the dramas and tragedies perhaps that you have in your life and you can just escape for a while in your art in however you want it to be. The point being that no matter who you are, you are a creative person and you will be able to create something beautiful and why not? And um, I, if you start with a sketch journal you actually will be able to just keep your art and um, as time goes by you can see how you've improved 
over each uh, period as art has gone on. I only really started working on my art seriously towards the end of 2020 and we're now in March 2021. So it's just something I've started recently and I'm finding that I'm really enjoying it just to keep it simple and to have an outlet for some ideas, thoughts or emotions that I have that I can express. Instead of writing in a journal or a dear diary style, dear diary, I didn't feel so good today. With this, I'm able to put something um, simple down. I don't need, I'm not overly pressured to have too many words on the page. Um, and the actual art itself is, is a great outlet. I do enjoy doing pretty straightforward artworks, as you can see. So here I have a white plastic eraser and I'm just gently erasing all of the pencil marks from behind the ink because I'm going to be using markers to colour this one in. I tend to, even though you can see my hand going up and down, I'm really only pushing the eraser on the upward strokes um, and not dragging the paper back and forth. I then go just go in with a dry paintbrush and flick all the little erasings right off the page, right off my desk and onto the floor because you just don't want things getting stuck on your artwork. So I like to use a limited palette. This is something I've been talking about for the past few months and this really means that you're using um, probably black and white and really at a maximum of two main colours. And there are different ways of combining the two colours that you're going to use that are part of your limited palette. And as you're going to see in this uh, in this painting, I'm now getting my watercolours out there. These are the uh, Schmincke, it's the travel pack. And I'm going to be using a limited colour palette of yellows and blues. So these are two primary colours. The primary colours are red, yellow and blue. And here I've chosen yellows and blues. And this I'm, only going, I'm going to try and only use these two colours within this drawing, within this artwork, within this painting. So with the, with the watercolours, I'm actually now going to be doing a wash and putting a light colour wash on the back walls behind the shelves, behind the articles on the shelves, just to uh, set the background for myself. So I've got quite a bit of water going there and a, a, a blue colour that I mixed. I never take the colour straight out the pan. I always mix colours for a little bit of this blue, a little bit of that blue perhaps, and I will then blend it across on above the one shelf. So we're working at one shelf back wall, if you will, at a time. And then bring in a slightly uh, deeper shade. I think then that is the ultramarine. And I'm going to now change the blues down a little bit as I do the next shelf background. So I've got quite a bit of water there. I'm, I'm trying to keep it flowing. You want the edge of your watercolor flowing forward at all times and not necessarily drying out. The idea being that each of the shelves behind each shelf and the, below the next shelf, you've got a different shade of blue. So as I said, I want to use blues and yellows. I think they go very well together. There is some um, scientific uh, exploration about the, the pattern of using blues and yellows as opposed to using red and greens. And this comes back to many artworks are actually painted with blues and yellows. The one that comes to mind is um, Van Gogh's Starry Starry Night where he's only really using blues and yellows and it's, give it, it's such a good impression. We, we like it when we see it, we find it to be a good combination of colors in artwork. As we get down to the, to the further, the, the bottom background, I've added a little drop there of the Payne's Gray just to give it slight more depth, but I'm continuing on with the blue color theme. So the whole of the back wall of my florist shelf area is going to be in shades of blue, as we see. And then I deepen up the blue with just one more spot there just to paint the floorboards, um, because that is really the bottom part. And here I'm bringing in a little bit way more paint gray just to add gravitas to the bottom part, to the floor, to the, to the base of the drawing, just to give it a little bit more uh, stability and um, ground it in almost in a way. So here I've actually straightened it up a bit more on the camera for you and now I'm going to start considering bringing in some of the yellows. I'll be mixing up a couple of yellow shades to colour in the actual vases on the top shelf of the, the florist's shelving. I like to have quite a bit of colour on because I don't want to be keep going in and out. I did do a wash on the back walls but I'm 
picking out um, with watercolour um, some yellows just to highlight those vases. I've always found it easier to draw objects, knickknacks and, and things rather than people or animals. So you will very, very rarely see me attempt people and animals because to be honest, I'm really not that I'm not that good at it. I'm far better off doing simple, straightforward drawings of objects. In a way, I'd like to be that sort of artist who could do portraiture or people's dogs or, or something like that. But I've always been drawn to um, not only objects, to buildings and so on. I do like doing urban sketching, uh, pretty straightforward things with straight lines, really, um, in a lot of the work I do. So I'm coming in now with some uh, further combinations of yellow, just adding some touches to the flowers in the main bouquet, just mixing them up there and then continuing on, slightly different shades of yellow in all of the vases on the top row. I never actually thought that I would be the sort of artist who drew things. I had this vision of being, you know, another Van Gogh or another Monet or something like that, but it really wasn't meant to be. So. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue on working with these shelf uh, drawings that I seem to be doing an awful lot of. I, there was no, I had no intention of just drawing shelves with things on, but it seems to be the type of art that I'm able to do um, and I enjoy doing. And I just wanted to share it with you. Clearly, I, you know, I, I do art that, that satisfies me. I'm not necessarily um, going to be a brilliant art teacher for you or, or perhaps even tell you techniques that you don't know. There are many videos on YouTube that can certainly address these things. My main point that I want to get across is that no matter at what level of artist you are or how much of a beginner you consider yourself to be or maybe you're even a pre-beginner as it were with art, I think that you need to just start. I think it's important to find what, you've, what you're good at drawing and continuously, I don't know, draw them all the time and eventually you it, you perhaps get it out of your system. This is what I'm feeling now. Um, last year I did a whole load of herbs and I was drawing herbs till they were coming out my ears but this year I seem to be uh, focusing on this, my, my shelvies. We used to have a selfie, now we have a shelfie where you've got your stuff on a shelf and there are many types of scenarios where shelves can be used just to highlight or enhance your, your sketch journal. And just so, let's just be clear that I believe that a sketch journal is where you are generally drawing things in, in with a pen, pen and ink, and um, perhaps colouring in such as this with either paint or crayon or markers, as you'll see later on. Whereas an art journal to me is more where people are um, drawing paintings of where they're going, painting their day, what happened in their day, and so on. And then also embellishing it with adding, um, mo not mosaic, with adding collages and ribbons and pockets and what have you and to my mind that's more of an art journal but I do think that the terms are interchangeable uh, of course why not it really doesn't matter what you call your art um, as long as you're doing it I think that's got to be the thing I think the point is that if we are we are creative beings and to be able to express yourself through art is, is a brilliant way of, of, of enjoying life as well it art is, is art is a fun thing now I'm starting to use my limited palette. I've got the Tombow markers here. You could use any markers or felt pens or whatever you call them. And I have a few in the yellow and then just two blues really. And I'm going to be using these to add shade to the actual uh, paintings and objects on the shelf and to just bring more detail to the drawing. Previously I've used crayon, I've used um, pencil crayon, but this time I thought I'd use markers. The colours are more vibrant when you do that and you can certainly get into every nook and cranny with your with the markers. So I start off from the top with my as the as the pens are laid on the on the desk there from the yellows and working my way down just with a few limited palette colours. I do have a, a lime green there which I'm just using to pick out some of the leaf work in the actual greenery and the vase. So of course we know that yellow and blue make green, but I'm trying not to let green become a dominant colour here. It is just enhancing the yellow as it will also enhance the blue. Another way of looking at using limited palettes of say in this particular case yellows and blues is like saying, what are you going to wear in the morning? When you open your wardrobe, you may have all the colours of the rainbow hanging there. You've got the reds, the blues, greens, oranges and everything hanging in your closet and you put a combination together but you don't wear the whole rainbow at the same time. 
typically you could wear maybe a yellow blouse with some blue pants or, or whatever it is, or beige and, and greys, but you're not going to go out dressed in a multiple palette. What you will do is choose complementary items, maybe a scarf that complements a blouse you're wearing, maybe perhaps you'll get your shoes to go with things, because if you do wear random and all the colours of the rainbow, it can look quite confusing and overwhelming at times. And I think if you're a beginner artist, if you do limit the colours you actually put onto your pieces, you have better control and the whole composition looks more pulled together. I'd love to hear what you have to think about this. Do you like using limited palettes or have you never tried them at all? Or are you one who likes to dip into every single paint pot you have and put multiple colours into one art piece? It would be interesting to, to know what you think. And the nice thing about art is that really you can do what you like because it's your artwork and it's up to you what you do. How you bring and combine colours together and your materials together is what makes your art unique to you. Let's face it, no two people are going to draw the same thing in the same way. I'm now coming back in. This is a, a Pigma Micron pen. It's actually a 0 0.1 that I'm going in with. And I've written the date there in this little square picture frame, which is March the 1st, 2021. I've put the temperature, which is 8 degrees. I live in Vancouver, so it's actually warmed up from the zero we've had uh, recently in the, in the colder months of February. I'm going to be writing something below the bottom shelf, which I like to put a little bit of gratitude where I can write what I'm thankful for and what, I, what I'm considering and how I, what, I, what I feel good about at this time. And then just going back at the very top, I'm writing my saying for the month. I like to have a saying for each month this year. And for March, my saying is, don't live someone else's dream, which I feel really sums up life in general. You don't want to be doing what your parents thought you should be doing, what your friends or neighbours think you ought to be doing. Live your dream. Make sure that the, the life you're living is following your dream. To get back to the gratitude, therefore, at the bottom, I have written... Grateful for family and friends, looking forward to warmer weather, and I'm watching Broadchurch. Broadchurch is a series I happen to be watching on TV, and I've been watching it this March. It's a bit of a psychological thriller, and highly recommended if you like that type of thing. So it's been something, I wouldn't say I'm binge watching it, but I've certainly um, got through it in the last uh, few days. But it's been a super interesting piece of TV. So I like to write that down as well, so that when I look back over my journal, and say, oh yes, in March I was watching this. Um, as you notice uh, in my previous videos, I was perhaps reading a different book or something like that. And there's a little bit of a close-up on how this actual, the final piece is looking. I will actually now uh, glue it into my sketch journal. This is, I find it easier this way, rather than working directly in the journal, which makes me a little anxious. Um, I prefer to work on separate pieces of paper and then when I like the work, which I very often do, I will just glue it straight into with a print stick there or Amazon glue that I have. And I will just glue it into, into my sketch journal. So what's happening is the actual journal is getting fatter and fatter each time I'm gluing in a new page. But it's OK because I'm enjoying doing this work. I only ever have an artwork on the right-hand side in my sketch journal. If I've got any comments about the art, I will put it on the left-hand side. But I don't paint or draw on both sides of the page. I only ever do the right-hand side for, for art. And then if, if there are words, they will go on the left-hand side. That's how I like to work with my journals. There it is. I'm Alison Hazel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.